Welcome, welcome. This is Simply King Podcast. This is your boy Rodney Perry King himself. And you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. I appreciate y'all for tapping in with me always. Last week was a certainly a rough, hard week in terms of podcasting. Um personally, but also the episode was also a deep episode. Make sure you check it out with Shari Botwin, Thriving After Trauma. We talked about a myriad of things, but I think it was a healthy and a productive conversation. I think you all will enjoy. Um, but today, 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 I am doing another redo. Um, I did an episode back in November of 2017 called In My Zone, which I think is so ironic to this that I'm having this, you know, kind of. That was seven years ago. That was seven years ago. The fact that I've been podcasting this long is always trippy to me. But um, and to be able to create from yourself, create from your old words, from your old work is something that I really definitely take as a, a genuine privilege. Um, but but today we're going to be talking about comfort zones, hence the, the setting. I'm in bed. I'm feeling comfortable. I hope you're feeling good, too. And um, we're going to chat about comfort zones in a brand new way, in an even more matured way. You know what I'm saying? So before we get too deep, before we get too deep, we got to talk about love is blind. We got to talk about it. Okay. First off, did not expect for, you know, Jimmy and Chelsea to ultimately end up the way that they did. I think that I, I predicted that they would definitely get married but not work out. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe he, you know, just sticking with it, just trying, you know, just not want to embarrass themselves and just sticking with it type of thing. But to know that he really stuck to his guns and was like, nah, that showed me a lot. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about that. And it's funny because I've seen a lot of people feeling like Jimmy kind of went a little too hard on it. But to me, I feel like, nah, I, I think that if I say something to you, um, in the privacy of, you know, off these cameras and just in con- like, if I like wrap it up into this all around, like, this is really serious and I don't need this to be repeated, but I'm telling you because you're my person and you repeat that. Not only do you repeat that out loud in front of people, but you repeat it on a show that's about to be seen by millions of people. Um, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Also too, I've seen people out here basically bullying Oh my god. Basically bullying baby girl who they suppose is the person who she's talking about. Cause I don't think there was ever any name spoken. She met two different women, but they're like bullying one specific woman. I think her name is Barbara, I believe. Uh we don't really know who it exactly it is. We don't even know if those two are even the people the potential people. To be quite honest, um, there's so much shot. Production is such a thing, is a thing. Um, so we don't know if they met each other on camera somewhere and we just didn't see it because it might not have made the cut because they don't know what's going to make the final cut. We don't know who met who. That could have been a game day decision and editing for them to not even show who the hell they're talking about and just kind of keep the, you know, the mystery of the thing going. But it is what it is. I think they both will find whoever they ultimately need to be with, to be quite honest. I don't I don't mean I assume that everybody has issues and trouble in the dating um, dating of it all. But I do believe that white people tend to end up with somebody. <laughs> I don't know. Moving on to the main course, which everybody thought this was the main course. It took up majority of the episode. It was. The most. To me, it almost made me emotional. And I'll tell you why it almost made me emotional is Clay used to be me. Clay was me four years ago, Um, maybe even five years ago. He is not present. Um, Certainly seems like he desires love, 
but may not have the particular tools to secure it, to see it for what it is, to not overcomplicate it, to not overanalyze it. Um, he's too in his head. Um, he, he, he's utilizing the things that he's seen from other people and trying to juxtapose that to his life. Um, it's so many things that he does and shows up as where it's like, he just got to keep doing the work. He got to do the work and he's going to be good. He's going to find somebody. I've seen a lot of people speaking to Clay being a person who they feel like just got on the show just because he, you know, was one looking for clout and all these things. They are here saying that they really recruited the dude. So it wasn't like he was actually seeking the show out directly anyway. Um, people have pointed out how the fact that he wasn't just straightforward, sold on the idea of, you know, love being blind and kind of you seem like he was convinced into it more than anything. And I think that that plays a big, big role in all of this. Um, to me, I think that, you know, he didn't, I don't think, I think he fucked up by getting all the way to the altar and saying no. Um, it did feel like a game. I do believe that it was a game day decision. I think that there were certain things that he was probably thinking like, can I live with this? Can I think past this? Is this really going to be a big thing or not? Um, and I understand that. I genuinely do understand that. But I do believe that he deserved, he, he, he deserved to be honest with himself in that moment. And he, I think he deserved, I think AD deserved for, for her to be presented with that honesty, even if it's embarrassing, even if it's all that. You don't want no man who really don't want you. Um, in that way, at least. Um, but I was heartbroken seeing that nigga talking about some, I don't want to go and all that shit. That felt like old me. Um, but the whole part about finances being something they kind of threw as a, like a last minute curveball, I thought that was intriguing. People have, you know, it came out or information speculating that AD didn't even work throughout the time of the show. Um, and she was like, she took time off from selling houses and stepped away from her VIP manager job, all those things. And in my mind, I'm like, OK, so it makes sense why she, you know, is really, really um, feels a way about how his schedule is. But in his mind, it's like I got to work. So I think with that context of him knowing that he's the breadwinner, but also desiring somebody who is at least actively doing something I don't think that that's too far fetched. And I think for the type of person, you know what type of partner that you want. And I think that that wasn't the wrong thing to do. Um, the AD hate uh, is interesting. Um, I do believe that there were signs. I think he was signifying majority of the time that this isn't something that he wanted to do. But I think that the main course that we got from it all from Love is Blind, the finale episode was Clay Clay's parents. The scene with Clay's parents was so enriching because I think we need to see our like our parentals having those hard conversations that we might not ever witness. That was a private conversation that we should have never even seen. And I'm so glad they kept the cameras on and I'm so glad that they allow for the cameras to be on them in that moment. And I hope that it helps Clay a lot from that time, from him seeing how his dad showed up in that moment and that can be him see this is a cautionary path that he's walking down like you could still be so many years removed and still not get it still not get it and everybody involved deserves more but that's what it is that's my review real quick but let's get into the real nitty gritty of today because we're talking about comfort zones let's get into it so in my 20, got my, got my iPad right here. In my 2017 episode, In My Zone, um, which I don't go back and listen to a lot of my old episodes that much. But when I do, I'm always taken back by the idea that, damn, my ass really, my ass really be potting. You know what I'm saying? Like, not even to stroke my own ego, but I really be potting. You know what I'm saying? And, Let's first start off with what the comfort zone is so that we can all level set on this episode. A comfort zone can be described as this, and I'm getting this from ArrayBC.com. 
A comfort zone can be described as a psychological state in which things feel familiar to a person and they are at ease and in control of their environment, experiencing low levels of anxiety and stress. Now, I thought to do this episode, I think what makes it so intriguing is that I spoke to things that I discovered about being in my own comfort zones. And what I said in that in that uh, episode that really stuck with me was the comfort zone can truly be a uh, a space that cre- creates naivete. It can make you naive if you allow for the comfort zone to. If you allow for yourself to be in the comfort zone longer than you need to, everything is good in moderation is kind of what I got from, you know, my 2017 self. And I thought it was so interesting to kind of think about it in that context of like, oh, you you can certainly overdose on comfort. You can overdose on being comfortable in a certain mindset, in a certain habit, in a certain act, you know, behavior, whatever and what have you. Um, pressure, trials and tribulations, the incidental building of character through experience is another key point that I took away from that episode And to me, I had to like it inspired me to write because just thinking about I knew exactly where I was in that time. In that time of 2017, in November of 2017, I literally was recorded that episode in a hotel room in Dallas, Texas. I was on location for uh, my old corporate job. And I was in this very transitional period of my life where I was, you know, removed from a previous relationship, starting a brand new, you know, kind of love connection um, that ultimately ended up in a relationship the following year. Um, Had a new job, was making some good money, um, was on location um, in Texas for the job uh, while I was, and mind you, I was living in Chicago, but on location in Dallas for like six weeks. And uh, I made this, made this thing about comfort zones in my hotel room when I was genuinely entering into a new comfort zone. I made like, I, even though I was probably speaking from a, a, a perspective of like leaving a comfort zone in the, t- to a certain degree uh, and getting into a space where I'm, you know, trying out something new. I think that that was definitely what it was. But I, in reality, I was just upgrading my comfort zone. I was widening out with my comfort zone scope area really was and um it's so interesting to me because that new zone was such a a a a space and place that i think i needed to go through it was the start of a brand new journey um it was something that i called into my life in a genuine way um i wanted it i wanted this like desk job i wanted to feel like oh maybe what i need is something that's just you know it's stable. I know when I'm know what my schedule is. I know kind of how it, to operate. I know, understand all these various things and I can show up in that. But that really didn't help me too much. I don't think so. I don't think it really helped me too much. Um, but I have new information. I have certainly have new information that I kind of feel based off of things that I've researched recently in preparing for this episode but also new perspective because that was seven years ago. I'm seven years older. Um, that job is came and gone. That relationship is came and gone. I'm so, I'm like so many years removed from that relationship as well. So it's like so much has occurred that I have new perspective. I wanted to quote yet again, this great pros and cons list that was put together by the Walden um, Walden University uh, Center, the Walden University. Um, this is, I'm quoting this from WaldenU.edu, the pros and cons of the comfort zone. Acknowledging wisely, deciding when to embrace and break through boundaries is critical to career and life successes. So, The pros of staying in your comfort zone include drawing in experience, being confident, minimizing risk, rejuvenating, expending less energy for routine tasks, 
holding back, no risk, no reward. Um, oh, wait, excuse me. The cons are holding back, no risk, no reward, not learning new skills. And the one that I really want to like expound on is missing the opportunity to make your comfort zone bigger. And when I seen that, I never really thought about like, damn, we really be out here making our comfort zones. We never we never think about growing our comfort zone or have the perspective of growing our comfort zones, but we do it sometimes accidentally. I think when you upgrade parts of your life, you're growing your comfort zone. When you are in a situation where you have gotten a new job, you bought a house, you bought a car, you've bound yourself to someone else in partnership. And so now you have more bandwidth because your your bandwidth is now split between another person's responsibilities. Uh, that is you widening out your comfort zone. Um, what they say um, under missing the opportunity to make your comfort zone bigger is one of the most compelling reasons to push outside of your usual boundaries is to stretch your comfort zone when you take risk, embrace your discomfort and doubt and succeed, you not only improve your overall skill set, but you boost your confidence. The more you try challenging activities, the more normal those tasks become, broadening your comfort zone to larger and larger dimensions. So think of it as a. If you started out. Your first apartment was small. Let's say if it was just a studio. You can only grow oh so much. You can only put oh so much furniture in there before it. And you do, you made all these choices based off of your comfortability. You needed these appliances. You needed this furniture. You needed to warm your house to a certain degree. But at some point in time, you're going to outgrow it. It's going to be tight. And now you're only now you're only making excuses as to why you should stay there instead of expanding and getting more space. I, I will play this great quote. I'll play this clip from um, a creative and entrepreneur uh, named Maurice Harris. Um, no relation, because um, my that's my my mom's name. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think it's no relation um, to to my knowledge. Um, but I want to play this for you because I thought it was so intriguing to me. And I'm in a. And I'm going to, you know, we can, you know, I give you my points about how I, why this touched me so much. But Maurice talks about managing your abundance. And I think that there is an interesting through line between comfort zone and abundance. Let's get to that clip. OK, today's episode of capitalism doesn't care about your creativity. Don't be talking shit on my garden either. My garden is beautiful. It's exactly how I want it. Y'all know giving is the practice of abundance, right? You do need to be giving back and giving in a way that feels very intentional because that's how it comes back tenfold you see all this i can't afford and use all this myself and so if i go give this to a friend that i know is in need of some scented geranium hello that's gonna feed my garden i need it to clear space so that i can make room for more stuff what i want you to see here is it doesn't take a lot this is not even in that much dirt Abundance can come out of very small spaces. If you're not watching your abundance, it'll take over, overwhelm you, and actually oppress you. And if given enough time, if I don't manage, it'll take over this whole garden and kill everything else in its path. So you really have to be mindful of how much you're taking in, how much you let something overwhelm you. Think, oh my God, this plant is just so big and it's growing and it's doing such amazing things, but it's killing other things in your garden. Okay. Okay. So because of that, that brought me to a whole new sense of understanding of, under, of abundance. And it made me think of, it made me think of abundance as, you know, as the comfort zone. Cause you feel like, imagine the idea like based off the definition of what abundance is, like the there's low levels of anxiety and stress. If you're abundant, you're not really thinking about what you need to be handling. You, you feel good. You feel like you have more than enough, beyond enough. And I think that that in itself is such an abundant feeling. 
and comfort zones are just that, you know? And I think that we should literally do our best to grow and increase our abundance um, and manage our abundance and understand that, you know, when there's too much or when we need to spread or when we maybe need to give things away so that we can make more space for more new, um, wider abundance to kind of, you know, be received. Um, but let me continue to explain. So expanding your comfort zone actually allows for you to remain stabilized in that comfort. Now, stick with me now. I think that people usually see the ideas of, you know, taking risk, um, making certain changes, learning new tricks, learning new things, um, always kind of staying in this state of, you know, thinking about the growth um, and improving yourself as at some point you're going to stop doing that. And I think that no one should ever stop doing that. We live so much life. And if you're blessed enough to live a life that's long, that whole time that you're experiencing, you're going through this experience, you should be doing your damnness, in my opinion, to make sure that you're expanding in some way, shape or form. Um, as we develop the moments that we should seek to step out of our comfort zones, we have less impact on our lives. Like working 20 plus years, now you have retirement, a nest egg to live off of. It's nice. It's cool, right? So work now because this particular area of life is going to expand and then you'll have, it'll be less impact the things that you do at that point in time to get yourself out of your comfort zone. Think of like picking up new hobbies, learning a new language, doing things that you probably never had the time to do. Those things are still very much getting yourself out of a comfort zone because you're starting a new, you're a freshman again, you're a rookie again, you're a noob, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And there should be a certain point in time where we see ourselves as genuine, like forever works in progress. Like we'll never be finished. We'll never be able to do everything that we can do but we need to optimize and maximize on the experience and the time that we have and be the best that we could be. Um, at a phase where you are wanting to live life to the max because of your limited responsibilities, such as no kids, long-term partnership, it's such a particular phase. I think while like myself, no kids, no long-term partner, I think at this phase in my life, not only do I see myself as having to always be open to take new challenges, take up risks, uh, look at the world in a way that's going to be beneficial to me and seize the day because I have that freedom. There's people who have children, have spouses where they wish in this very moment that they could have just a little bit of freedom to be able to go and expand themselves in a different way. So we got to see it as something that's truly, truly necessary to our overall goal. We can be intentional about our growth. It doesn't have to come by way of accident. I think I can speak from experience. I've had to pivot um, when I didn't want to. I've had to pivot when I was genuinely wanting to. Uh, life can hit you really fucking fast, and then it creates these opportunities for you to now have to make a different choice. You don't have to really do that. I think you can plan these things. You can you can do it intentionally. And what I wrote was we must be intentional about our growth and use those moments of newfound luxury because there's something luxurious about your comfort zone, having everything that you need in place. That's a very light sense of luxury. And to be able to continuously expand on that. Like, okay, now you got an apartment. Okay, that's cool. Now you decorate it. Okay, that's cool. You put some appliances in it. Now you're re, you know, now you're renovating. Let's say you let's say you have the DIY bug. You know what I'm saying? You you putting you putting holes in the walls and paint on the walls. You feel me? You doing your thing. You making this into uh, you bringing so much character into the space. It's intriguing. Um but I think that we should see any newfound luxury and convenience as indicators for self-assessment and reviewing parts of our life for expansion. This is something that I'm telling myself right now. 
as I'm currently in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a scenario where I'm being faced with yet again, another pivotal moment in my life to where I can turn and pivot and seize different opportunities that I can create for myself. And I think that I need, I think what I never did was be able to recognize when am I allowing myself to let up on the gas? Cause that's what happens when you overstay your time in the comfort zone is that you're allowing yourself to drive yourself to a certain point in time to where you're now comfortable, where you now have everything you need. And now you ease up, you coast, you turn on cruise mode and don't even care. You, 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 ain't, you on your phone, you listen to music, you vibing because you have all the luxuries and conveniences that anyone would need. And I think that that in itself is the indicator that, oh, maybe I need to assess something and then expand. Um, and I, I can just understand people maybe hearing that and feeling like that feels so daunting to not really be able to just sit in that comfort. But the fact of the matter is, is that's where you expanding your comfort zone and the, 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 the area of your comfort zone, in my opinion, that's where you have so much time to spend in it. The time expands. You see what I'm saying? Because if you only have a small apartment, and you are in your 20s, um, but you have aspirations to have partnership and have children and all that, there's a clock for that small apartment. You can't be there forever. You can't live like that forever. You can't live like you're you're the only one who's going to be in your space. You got to expand. And so I think that that in itself makes it something that we should keep in mind. And... um, I think these expansions could come by way of these. I gave, I I wrote down a few examples. So let's say getting close to your partner uh, or preparing yourself for a relationship um, in the present time, finding ways to increase your personal affairs, savings, investments, insurance. You might need to, even if you already got it, you might need to find an even better one. Oh, can I save on insurance right now? Do I have the best health care plan? Um, do I have, you know, maybe I need to go and, you know, figure out certain things. Do I have a living will? All those things, just getting those things in order just so that they can be out your mind, creating even more comfort, widening out your comfort zone. Working on your body and wellness in a new way. I think it's something that a lot of us, you know, always speak to desiring and wanting. But like when we be intentional about doing it, I think it it always hits a little bit different when we finally get to that space that get over that hump of like not making it such a chore, but truly making it a part of your life. Find a new hobby for stimulation. That could be a number of things. You know, it's just something that you you choose to do. That's an incremental thing that you build on that you are the only one who satisfies from. That's that, you know, that's really satisfying uh, for you and that really, you know, you enjoy. It. But I think for men, especially men need to understand that hobbies don't always have to make you money. They don't always have to do that. They could just be for your pleasure. And stimulation, that's it. Um, potentially purging and stopping some commitments also, too. I think people probably always think of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone to be, you know, trying new things and all those, all those things. But also too, sometimes the trying new thing is also letting go of things. And that could be, you know, letting go of the spaces that you're in, the people that are in your life, the attachments that you have to certain people and things, all of it. You know what I'm saying? Assess that, do something with it. And then lastly, there are so many examples, but I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't say the one that I think is the one that we all should be doing on a consistent basis. And that's just doing deeper self-work, looking at yourself and figuring out a way to like really unpack even more about who you are in this complex being that you are. You feel me? That's what I feel. That's what it is. So I think I said enough. I think I got it. I think we get it. Let's send it on. Okay. So, send it on. Um, today's send it on is 
I want you to think about how do you know that you have overstayed the comfort zone? Let's talk about it. I feel like for me, it's simply when I am in a space where I am buying random shit, where I am, I'm looking at my budget, I'm looking at my bills and I'm realizing like, damn, I got a surplus. And I'm not thinking, oh, let me do what's responsible. You feel me? It's like, I already did the responsible thing already. I want to buy myself something. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then I think I have this like remorseful feeling anytime there is a uh, a low moment or a, a, a being an entrepreneur, you know, you're going to have, you know, these high and low moments of and seasons where I, I beat myself up for treating myself. And I've had to get out of that sense of thinking because I believe I deserve nice things. Right. But I think that. I now understand that I have to push myself to have a surplus to widen out, widen out my comfort zone so that I can live and thrive and rest while I'm there. Um, And also makes me stronger and feel more prepared for when I do need to expand and I do need to take that risk. So today's Senate on is how to tell me, how do you know that you overstayed in the comfort zone. And I'm compiling these clips uh, and responses to hopefully inspire other people. So tap the link in the description of this episode and reply with uh, to my braid uh, with your response. I'm also going to be, you know, putting this on IG, putting this on um, TikTok, uh, and hopefully we can all, you know, help each other step out of the comfort zone. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's it. That's it. That was, that was the episode. Um, not too much, not too much. I didn't want to take too much time from y'all, um, on this good old Monday or whenever you are listening to this. Um, but I, I had to, you know, as I was reassessing kind of, you know, what I wanted to talk about this week before I actually start to promo something that I know you all are going to enjoy. It's going to be a fun ass time. I'm prepping to release the promo for my four part musical lyrical breakdown series that I usually do every year. And I got a lot of surprises for y'all. So be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. But if you don't know, you should know. You can follow me everywhere. At Kings underscore memoirs. You can follow. Uh, you can follow the podcast at Simply King Pod on IG. Make sure you go and like the Facebook page and follow the Facebook page as well. Um, In addition to all those things, I just want to, you know, say I appreciate y'all for always rocking with me, for listening to me, for being consistent weekly listeners, for being, you know, watches on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You know, for the folks who just listen to the audio, they don't y'all can y'all don't see a nigga in bed right now. I'm really deep into this, you know, comfort zone vibe. You feel me? Trying to give you all the feels, you know, trying to give you levels, levels. You feel me? Nevertheless, I appreciate y'all so much. This has been the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. I've been Rodney Perry, also known as King. And this has been Simply King. Peace.